Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday Morning Devotions. Good to be with you once again for the last devotion of the week. And uh, hope and pray that you've had a good week and that the devotions have been uh, helpful, challenging. I appreciate everyone's, uh, all those of you that uh, send kind words and how that God's using the devotions and uh, speaking to you through the devotions. I appreciate that. Um, now, don't forget, next week will be the last week that I'll be doing devotions for a while. And like I said, I'm not saying it's going to be forever. I don't think I will. I do enjoy doing it and uh, God is using it. But it, it will be for a little while, at least a couple of months. And by that time, you might have forgotten me and whatever. And I'll go home and cry. <laughs> they forgot me. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, uh, we've got some stuff we've got to work out, you know, with moving and Tracy and so on and so forth. And I know you know that, so I appreciate that. Uh, remember being Friday. Can I encourage you to be in prayer for your service or services on Sunday? Carol, Tracy, good morning. Be praying for, uh, be pr listen, listen, be praying for a move of the Holy Ghost. Pray for a move of the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's on my heart a little bit at the moment, so um, pray for that. Yes, I know you'll pray for other things as well, but we really need the Spirit of God moving in our midst. Lindsay, good morning. I am uh, I am excited for our services, or service, or services. Yeah, our Bible class at Open Door, and then our main service for those who are going to come to the Bible class. I have quite a few notes for you, quite a few things for you to put in your book this week that will be helpful as we look at Revelation chapter 6 dealing with the uh, the first six seals. So uh, looking forward to that. I'm, I'm sure the, the information that you get will be helpful. Uh, and then the message on Sunday morning. Oh, I'm looking forward to preaching that and uh, I believe it'll be a help and a challenge for all of us. All right, let's go to uh, John 16. I want to talk to you this morning on this thought. Where is the Holy Spirit in all this? Where is the Holy Spirit in all this? And uh, this is something that's been on my heart a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I uh, <laughs> as, a, <laughs> as a being in the pastorate, uh, you know, I, I don't um, I don't fellowship with too many pastors. Not not all to do of my choosing. Um, but, you know, you, you uh, through social media and other things, you, you get to see what's going on. And sometimes, sometimes you sit there and you read, Brother John, good morning. You read and you, you see what's going on and I get sent emails and stuff. And sometimes it's like sitting at a tennis match with, a, with some popcorn. And you're eating popcorn as you're going from side to side, watching these pastors load up their theological guns and fire away, you're just eating your popcorn, just, you know, like, wow, what's going on? And uh, I've, had a, I've had this question rolling around in, in my heart for a while, dealing with where is the Holy Ghost? Now, the reason why I say that is because there's a, there's, really there's two sides to the independent, <laughs> independent Baptist uh, position on, on salvation. You have a side that says, Repent of your sins is a must and you've got to preach repentance and repent of your sins and you've got to have that. And then, then you've got the side that says, no, it's believe only, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and so you've got these two camps and, uh, you know, the, the, the repent of your sins crowd say, says to the believe only crowd, that's easy believism. That's not right. Blah, blah, blah. It's got to be this. And then you've got those who say, no, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ only that say to those who say you've got to repent. That's works. No, that's not right. You're not even saved. You're all damnable heretics. And you've got this chewing and throwing about you've got to repent of your sins. No, it's believe only. Repent of your sins. Believe only. And, and I'm sitting there going, like, like I said, eat my popcorn going side to side. And I just eat, and, and it's like, oh, okay. Now, to both camps, and we have both camps come on every now and again. So let me just say to both camps, let me say to those of you, and I believe in repentance. Jesus said repentance must be preached, and I believe in that. But let me just say to those of you who say, bless God, repent of your sins must be preached. And let me just say, where is the Holy Ghost in that? And also to those who say, no, it's believe only, call upon the name of the Lord, believe, believe. Where is the Holy Ghost in that? 
And what I mean by that is this. Have we not forgotten the work of the Holy Spirit when it comes to salvation? I, 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 I read an email the other day of a pastor in South Australia who was saying, no, repentance of your sins, you've got to preach that. And he, and he gave his understanding of what that was. And, and he wasn't a work, Sister Jean, good morning. He wasn't dealing with works based. He was saying you've got to have a change of your mind about the sin and the Lord Jesus Christ and, and turn to Jesus. And I, I don't necessarily, I don't have an issue with that. However, he, he was going on about all these scriptures about, you know, when you soul win or when you preach the gospel, you've got to repent of your sins. But I never heard anything about the Holy Spirit. And again, as I said, I've heard from the other camp, oh, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and, and where's repent in the gospel of John and this and that. And, and to them, I say, well, I've not heard you mention where's the work of the Holy Spirit in that. Have we forgotten in today's Christianity, have we forgotten in today's fundamentalism, the work of the Holy Spirit in salvation? Are we so enamored with men and the men that we tout and put up on pedestals, whether it's a Jack Hiles or whether it's a Stephen Anderson or whether it's a David Cloud or whether it's a Paul Jack? Have we put all these men up on pedestals and we've, we've looked to their terminologies and we've looked to their um, methodologies and all this sort of stuff? Whoa, well, hang on a sec. Where's the Holy Spirit in all this? Lucy, good morning. Where is the Holy Ghost in all this? I've not heard from either side about the work of the Holy Ghost in salvation. He said, well, what work is the Holy Ghost supposed to do? Well, here's an idea. Let's have a listen to see what Jesus had to say. Isn't that a good, that's a novel idea, isn't it? What does Jesus say? Instead of what does Hyle say and what does Stephen Anderson say and what does uh, Paul Chappell say and what does David Cloud say and what does Robert Sargent say and all this. You know what? At the end of the day, who cares what men says? Let's care what Jesus has to say, Fraser, good morning. And so therefore, when you're soul winning or whether you're preaching the gospel in your church or whether you're street preaching, where is the work of the Holy Spirit in salvation today? If it's no work of the Holy Spirit, it's just a work of the flesh or the work of men. That's all it is. Where is the work of the Spirit? And, uh, you know, you get those who tout, believe only, believe only. Oh, we saw 10 people saved today. Where, how come they're not? Where are they? Why are they not in church? That's a legitimate question. I remember, phrases on, I remember being, uh, uh, oh, cop, cops arbor. Are we, I hope, hope the cops haven't got you there, Fraser. I remember being in a conference. Fraser knows about the conference. He was there and a, a preacher got up by the name of Bill Winnegar. And I remember when Winnegar, he's in jail now. I rem, uh, pff, go figure. I remember when he got up and he's going on about this. He said, yeah, you guys say, oh, where's all your converts coming to church? You say, oh, we see all these people say, well, oh, bless God, where's your one? And all this sort of stuff. And all this thing comes out, comes out. And they try and squash down. And it's all about numbers, numbers. And, and uh, Hiles used to say, well, if God wasn't about numbers, he wouldn't have written a book about numbers, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah, but where's the work of the Holy Spirit in all this? We are very good in our gospel presentations to move men ourselves. You hear me? We're very good in, God, in presenting the gospel, in persuading and moving men ourselves without the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, do you believe that you're a sinner? Yeah, oh man, I believe I'm a sinner. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Oh yeah, pray this prayer after me. And you don't see him anymore. That's not, hey, listen, that is not the Great Commission. When I was pastoring Sunshine Baptist Church, we had a conference and we had a, uh, a preacher come over. And uh, he was preaching in the conference and a uh, good preacher and all that. And afterwards, uh, 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 <laughs> a guy who used to be a friend of mine, uh, he w we noticed that he was down at the altar with this young adult and they were kneeling down there and we were standing up the back talking. And then all of a sudden, this preacher gets up and he's like, whoa, glory, whoa. And off you go, whoa. And this, this young adult man gets up and they, they walk down the road and the priest says, oh, tell everybody what just happened. Go on, tell everybody. And, and the guy that was supposedly got saved was like, what? Oh, well, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You got saved. You got saved. Brother Stephen, good morning. You got saved. You got saved. He was actually telling you, you got saved. But there was no, there was no, there was nothing. There was nothing there. Brother Clive, good morning. Where is the work of the Holy Spirit when it comes to souls being saved? 
Where's the work of the, not just the work of the Holy Spirit for souls being saved. Where's the work of the Holy Spirit when it comes to saints getting right with God? So let's go to John 16 and let's see what Jesus had to say. All right. In John 16, verse 7, Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. And I love the word expedient. He's basically saying this is to your advantage. Okay. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he, the Holy Spirit, watch this now, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and he see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Did you see what Jesus said? That when the Holy Spirit comes, he will reprove the world of sin. That word reprove. All right. The Greek word for the word reprove, and yes, it's important we do word studies, all right, to get the meaning of the word. The word reprove means to expose, to convict, or to cross examine, as in like in a courtroom. So we're not taking the human instrumentation out of it. You and I are to be used of God to present the gospel. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit should be at work reproving the sinner, exposing to that individual the sinfulness of sin, uh, convicting the heart of the sinner, cross-examining. The Spirit should be at work in the, in the, in the life of this sinner. And the same token, the Holy Spirit ought to be at work reproving the life of the saint when he has sinned or she has sinned as well. If there is no convicting work of the Holy Spirit, there's no brokenness over sin. I have not, I am, and by the way, I'm not saying that everyone's going to show the same emotion, whatever, right? I'm not saying that at all. But where is the brokenness when it comes to people getting saved, to sinners, uh, to saints getting right with God? I am not seeing any of that. I don't know about you, maybe you are. We go out, we do door knocking, we get, we've got men that go out and do street preaching, we've got those of us, like on Thursday, the weather wasn't that good, so we went back to the shopping centre, we're handing out tracts and all of that, and, uh, you know, we, we get to talk to people, and we're, but there, where, where is, where is the, the brokenness? Is that not a legitimate question to be asking today? The danger is, is that we are saying that people are saved and they're not. Christianity is about change. When you're saved, your spirit changes. There's that immediate change within. You become a new creature in Christ. But Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I believe it is, verse 18, that we are changed by the Spirit of God. Our life is one of changing. Where I am today in my Christianity, I'm not where I was, praise the Lord, when I was 10 years old. There is no change happening. And once you, once you start saying, where's the evidence? Well, the believe crowd say, well, that's work. You show the, blah, oh, they get on you. And then the, the repent of your sins crowd, they get on you and all this sort of stuff. Well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Jesus is a fruit inspector. Uh, it's not for you to judge. He's given us a Bible, which he has written down in that we use. The word has judged. We judge everything by the scripture. Where's the fruit of the spirit? Where's the, where's the, where's the changed life? You know, if, if I got saved when I was 20 years old, and I was a fornicator at the age of 20. So, oh, bless God, I got saved. And then 30, 40 years later, I'm still sleeping around fornicating, committing adultery or whatever it is. Wouldn't you have a little bit of a question mark? That, are you really saved? Where's the evidence? I, I heard something really, a class, it was so good. Evidence doesn't lie. Evidence doesn't lie. And so therefore, where is the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the sinner and in the life of the saint? That's all I'm asking. 
the repent of your sins crowd? Where's the work of the, the Holy Spirit? Where's the reproving work of the Spirit when you're out doing your soul winning? To the believe on the Lord Jesus only crowd, where's the reproving work of the Spirit when you're going out soul winning, when you're preaching the gospel? Where the old timers would talk about it all the time. We've forgotten all about it. We, we like to flex our theological muscles and we're like, well, oh, we're right, no, we're right, we're right, we're right. And it's like, you know what? Knowledge puffeth up. Pride cometh before a fall. So I just sit back and I've got my, my bag of popcorn and I'm, it's like watching a te tennis match. Du, du, du. Oh, he's saying he's right. Mm, you're saying you're right. Well, hey, Jesus is right. Let's go to Psalm 51 for a minute. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Now, this is dealing with David, right? And listen to listen to the words. So, you know, where, A, where's the... The Spirit will reprove the world of sin. He will expose the sin. He will, he, will, um, he will convict the sinner of their sin. Now, before I read, let me just before I read Psalm 51, I just said this, I'm going to read Romans chapter 7 for a minute because I really do think this is, this is missing out. The, the use of the law in soul winning. Oh, do you believe that you're, do, do you lie? Yeah, do you believe that you're a sinner? Yeah, I know I am. What's sin? Sinning is missing the mark. And we, we have all this way to explain it. Listen to what Paul said in in. Uh, Romans 7, verse 7. What shall I say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So Paul said about the importance of the law when it comes to knowing that you're a sinner. But sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. So, folks, when you're soul winning, when you're talking to a lost person about salvation, the law is the schoolmaster to bring people to Christ. Paul said that in Galatians. It is the law. Remember cross-examine? You know when you're in a court of law, you've got cross-examination, and you're using the law in your soul winning, uh, you know, the commandments or the Ten Commandments or whatever it is, and, and the Spirit ought to be reproving. Now, I'm going to use a verse later on about he that often being reproved hardeneth his neck, right? But, but and, 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 and it's like, but we're trying to, in our own way, uh, manipulate people and coerce people into praying a prayer. And they go, well, bless God, man. I, listen, I could get six, seven people saved on a Thursday. Easy. Doesn't mean they're saved, though. Verse 9, for I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. All right, let's go to Psalm 51. Listen to what, what uh, David was saying all right, about sin. And, and this is a concerning thing as well in Christendom today. There's no brokenness over sin. Okay, There's remorse. I believe in repentance. There's, there's hardly any repentance out there. Zach, good morning. Remorse is not repentance. Remorse is just, oh, um, you know, it's like when David got caught by uh, by sinning with Bathsheba, you know, thou art the man. Oh, you know what I mean. Before that, he was like, you know, just carrying on as normal. So, so in Psalm fifty one, verse seventeen, this is what God is looking for. All right, the sacrifices of God. Now, hang on, before I read that, let me just let's just go up for a bit. All right, verse seven, purge me with hyssop. So he's been found out about his sin, and now he's repentant. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, with, uh, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy, hide thy face from my sins. Blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew in me, uh, renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. You can really sense as you read that David's repentance towards his sin and God. Okay. Verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. A broken and contrite heart. Where is the brokenness? Where's the contrite heart? Where's the reproving work of the Spirit when it comes to salvation, soul winning, street preaching, preaching the gospel in church? Where is that? There's no tears today. Everything's dried up in church. There's no crying. There's no brokenness. There's none of that. 
all there is in the majority of independent Baptist churches is hardness. Hardness. Bless God, we're fighting fundamentalism. We're right and they're wrong and the Caros are wrong and the Pennies are wrong and the Calvinists are wrong and they're wrong and we're right. That's all we got. <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28, all right? Proverbs 28. And by the way, it, you know what? When you go to church on Sunday and a message is being preached and the Spirit of God is convicting your heart, you know what it's all about. You know what it's all about. I know what it's all about. Okay, I've had times where it's like, you know, I, uh, I, I've i said something and it's like, oh, wow, you know, the Spirit of God's just smote me. And it's like, wow, I need to get that right. Whether it's with your wife or whether it's with your husband, whether it's a brother or sister in church or, or you know, you, you, you before God, you know. Proverbs 28, look at verse number 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Notice the confessing and the forsaking. <laughs> now that we're saved, we've got the Holy Spirit living in us. Okay, As we grow in our relationship with him, because I, I still believe, and I said this the other day, you know, we tout about the Trinity, the Trinity, the Trinity, right? The Godhead. And yet we talk about the Father and the Son, we talk about God and we talk about Jesus. Where's the Holy Spirit? It's almost like we're afraid to mention the Holy Spirit. Is he not the Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, Spirit of the Lord? All these things. He, is he not the, is, don't we call him the third person of the Trinity? Co-equal with God because he is God. And with that thought in mind, we should be well able to forsake, confess, and forsake. But you know what a lot of the times happens? We cover. Now, charity, as I shared on the weekend, charity will cover a multitude of sins. But charity covers the sin when sin is confessed. If sin is not confessed, it's not covered. It's, it's remained open and sin corrupts. So here we've got, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. You're not going to prosper in your Christian life without confessing and forsaking the sin. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh shall have mercy. I don't know about you. <laughs> I need mercy. I really need the mercy. Now, let's go to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. Here, here is an issue. This is a big issue. Proverbs 29, verse 1. He that being often reproved. Remember that word reproved? The Holy Spirit comes along. He reproves the world of sin. He exposes it. By the way, it should be, it should be um, used in preaching. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 1, when he's talking about preach the word, reprove, expose, rebuke what that's been exposed, and then exhort to encourage so reprove, rebuke, and exhort. That's in preaching. All right? And then Paul said in Ephesians 5, talking about the, fruit, uh, the unfruitful works of darkness ought to be reproved, to, ex to be exposed. But here's the problem. He says this, He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. There's a cutoff point. You know, when you're when 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 a believer or even a lost person is Pharaoh, for example, hardened his heart, all right? Hardened his heart, hardened it, hardened it, harder, and then bang, there was a cutoff point. And so when someone's being often reproved, instead of yielding to the spirit and confessing, they harden their neck. Then what's going to happen is that there is going to come a day suddenly, bang. Destroyed and that without remedy, without any answer, without any any hope to it. Now, I don't know what that would look like. So I'm not going to say, well, bless God, God's going to take you off the scene and whatever. I don't. It's up to God what he does. But he that being often reproved, I've seen that. People that are time and time again, even in my ministry, you rebuke, you tell off, you tell off, you tell off. They harden their neck to the point where... There is no, there is no softness anymore. There's just hardness. He's hardening. I'm not, I'm not bending my neck. Ye stiff-necked, he would say. And what does that mean? Well, someone who's stiff-necked won't bow their head. Someone who is not will bow their head in, in contrition, in brokenness. Yes, you're right, in humility. 
Where is the humility in our churches today? All we go around saying, well, bless God, the repent of your sins crowd is wrong. They're all works. They're all reprobates. They're all, they're all lost. They're all God. And, and, and the same repent crowd say, well, those of you that believe, believe only. That's easy believism. They're not saved. They're not saved. They're not saved. And we're now calling out who is and who isn't saved. Where's the Holy Spirit in all this? That's the question. Where is the Holy Spirit in all this? Jesus said when he comes, and he's here, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. That's his job. Not yours, not mine. It's the job, the work of the Holy Spirit and his alone. So we need him involved in our preaching, our soul winning, sinners to be saved, saints to get right with God. It is a work of the Holy Spirit. Maybe, and I've got to close with this, maybe we don't want to be associated that much with a Pentecostal charismatic crowd that we just drop anything to do with the Holy Spirit. We don't want to, I want a move of the Spirit of God on Sunday. I really do. Whether that's a convicting work, whether that's a strengthening work, I don't care. I just want the Spirit of God to move in our midst. And I'm not ashamed or afraid to say that because I don't care what other preachers say anymore. I really don't. I just sit there and I just laugh. It's like I watch it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. It's like you guys have, have at it, mate. Have at it. Anyway, when you go to church this Sunday, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And if he reproves you of anything, get it right. Get it right. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Lord, forgive us for quenching and grieving the work of the Spirit in our soul winning, in our street preaching, in our gospel preaching from church, or in anything to do with services on Sunday or where saints are gathered together. And I do pray for a move of the Spirit of God, not just in our lives, but in our churches on Sunday. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Great day on Sunday. Lord willing, I'll see you on Monday. Bye for now.